Welcome to another video on Mathematica for Physics series. In this video, we will go through some FineCalc commands. FineCalc, as you know, we installed in the last video, was a package which is used to do high energy physics calculations. FineCalc is too vast to cover in one lecture, so it would require its own series. So um, what I planned is that in this video, I, I will give a very brief micro analysis of how FineCalc works so that you can pick it up from there. So FineCalc has a very good manual which I urge you to go through. The manual is found in the app data folder where you install the package. So write app data in your explorer. Go to Mathematica and go to applications. This is where you had installed FineCalc. So go into the FineCalc folder and there go into documentation and then go into English. So there are two files over here, the manual and the reference. So open the reference. Let me bring it in the window. The reference is brilliantly written. It contains all functions with loads of examples for all of them. For example, if you want to do an amputate calculation. So it gives you how to apply amputate and for example anomalous dimensions how to set up dimensions so for each and every command it gives you loads of examples and you can start learning and gives explanation as well so you can definitely use it I urge you to go through this like one of my favorite functions is find calc let me find where it is find calc too bad it doesn't have a index so, uh, ah. ah, okay, never mind. I have another copy of this reference which has an index which you can find online. So, uh, I'll open that. So, there is a function called find rule. Sorry, I'm sorry. So, this calculates the Feynman rule. So, you can see how it's applied. If you've done the QCT calculation, the Feynman rules for non-abelian gauge theory were huge and the derivation would take 10-20 pages. So here you can directly see the Feynman rules for 3 point gluon amplitudes and 4 point gluon amplitudes without doing any calculation. So the package does the job for you. So let's go back and um, the manual gives you a brief overview of what fine calc is and you can see some examples usage so again it is very useful so let's begin with our calculation some basic things of fine calc package okay so one of the most used functions is ga so ga stands for gamma oh before we begin we have to import the package so to import the package you write this notation and write fine calc and the weird symbol on the tilde button. So it loaded the package. Now we can begin. So GA stands for gamma matrices. So if I want two gamma matrices with index mu and nu, so I write mu and nu. It gave me gamma mu and gamma nu. If you aren't getting the output properly, make sure your output is in traditional format. Go to edit preferences and set it to traditional format. So if I want the trace of two gamma matrices, I know trace of two gamma matrices should be four times the metric tensor. So if I give the TR is a command which is inside the final package which calculates the trace of gamma matrices and metric and other stuff so it gave you four times the metric tensor which is what it is so for example if i wanted to calculate trace of four gamma matrices if you've done the calculation it it's it takes a while so final package does the job for us so if i have new new row and say sigma so it calculated and it gave us the result 
if I want to write a four vector, I write f v, and then whatever say if I want if I have p plus r say p plus r okay, so p plus r it takes two arguments. The first is what is the four vector and what is the index. So okay, so index I write in this form either it's upper or lower. So if I write upper mu this gives p plus r and the index is upper mu so let me disable this so if i want the lower thing so i'll write fv p plus r lower mu so it came as lower to write the metric tensor the gamma is simple empty and the two indices mu this gave me the metric tensor but then this is mu and nu suppose I had a 4 vector p mu and I want to wanted to contract with the mu index of g mu so that p mu times g mu should give me p mu so this is done via a command called contract again you can see the usage of these commands in the reference which I showed at the beginning of this lecture so the two quantities that I have is metric tensor mu mu and times the four vector so I can write fv for four vector and it's p times comma mu so if I don't write upper or lower by default it takes it to be upper so and the metric tensor by default is upper so you might think if everything is upper what will contract it shouldn't contract but then the contract commands doesn't look at contraction as diagonally or of or the other way because when it sees an index being repeated it just replaces it with new contract doesn't care whether it's upper or lower so when i did that it gives me it gave me p new as if this four vector p mu had mu lower but but it didn't because if you see if you write f mu like this it came up so yeah so but this took it as lower so contract doesn't care where your index is upper or lower so now if i want to have a calculation like this if i want to expand to four vectors multiplication of two four vectors so if I have let me have a four vector say p minus q and the index is mu and I have p plus a let's suppose mu so this gave me new and new but suppose if I had one upper and one lower and then some lower so if I had this upper and I had this lower oh I have to have for it to be summed over I need to have both the indices to be same so new yeah so this should be a scalar product because as we know lower when when upper and lower is contracted it becomes a scalar product so what i have to do is apply the contract to this thing and it became a scalar product what it is so sometimes i may need to expand the space scalar products so okay before doing that find calc has a scalar product function so it's scalar product and suppose I define something p1 square so it will be p1 p1 so this is this should be say if I define as m square uh, say s by 2 because m I'll use later for mass so s by 2 so p1 square is defined as s by 2 so if I have a scalar product 
of say b1 oh b1 minus q and b2 minus a k okay so now if i want to expand the scalar product the command is expand scalar product and then i give the argument and i'd expand it so this is the desired result and since it didn't find anywhere p1 square so it couldn't substitute s by 2 so suppose if i had instead of p2 if i had p1 so where it found s1 square where it found p1 square it substituted this result s by 2 so here i have given a brief a very brief intro on some of the commands used in pinecap package as you can already see if we had to do all these without the pinecap package we would have to write a lot of replacement rules and notations all this could have been done without the package but then again a lot of rules and notations so pinecap does all the job for us and so all we have to do is deal with the real calculations that way and not worry about where the mu index is and the notations etc so let me close it up so i'll show you the code of a calculation of an annihilation process two photons make an electron positron pair or the vice versa so i've copied this whole code from the manual so i'll just execute it and briefly explain it so what this chunk of code that does is it defines the notation so to express is a mathematical command which basically assigns the following expression to p1 the expression is subscript so subscript box is a command so which takes two arguments p1 p comma 1 and it gives the result like this p subscript 1 so basically whenever i write p1 mathematica knows it's p underscore 1 so this is what the two expression does now when i write p1 s1 i want it to be slash notation i'm defining it as p1 slash so p1 slash is what p1 mu gamma mu so that is done by dirac slash operator so the dirac slash is being applied to if you remember slash at the rate let me show it you, to you again is mapped so it applies to this expression so dirac slash is applied to this list so when i run it see so you get, we get the dirac slash notation which is again p1 dot gamma p2 dot gamma etc now as i showed you the scalar product so um <coughs> scalar product is um, i'm just defining p1 square should be m square because p1 and p2 refer to the electrons so therefore pore momentum square is m square while k1 and k2 refer to the the photons and as you know photons are massless so all these are definitions that we are doing so let me run all of them at once oh i got a error because somewhere i had already defined m square so doesn't matter oh. the code will run nonetheless okay so now i define a contraction i define expression dirac matrix gamma mu i i'll define four expressions that appear in amplitude calculations so i'll run all of them one by one and you see these are right now there is no calculation done i was just in dirac matrix gives you a gamma mu again i could have done a ga for that and p1 s1 gave you gamma dot p1 so it's p1 slash and again k1 slash and an m as it is and then a gamma mu so i got all these four expressions now what i want to do is i want to apply the trace operator so i'll apply so i'm not looking out these terms randomly they come from the amplitude calculations so if you've done the calculation you'll remember these terms getting these terms is easy what is difficult is calculating the terms so that that is what mathematica is doing simplifying those terms is the difficult part which is what mathematica is doing so here i'm applying a tr operator if you remember the trace operator so it's being applied to a complicated product of f1 f3 and these expressions so 
it simplified it again I'll apply to three and four simplified. so the final product is given by this complicated expression tr1 divided by scalar product and blah 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 I run it so I get this complicated expression now if I want to write it in a beautiful way that is I want to write in terms of powers of m so when I, whenever I expand there are many powers of m I want to write the expressions according to the various powers of m there is a very nice command in final package the collect to it takes the expression and then what powers do you want to compare with so when I run this so you see m4 came the term with m power 4 the term with m square and the term without any n separately so it's simplified just to check whether this calculation is correct in this process this process has a symmetry of k1 k2 like if I interchange k1 and k2 the result should be the same so what we can do we can take this expression and interchange k1 and 2 and subtract if the result is 0 that means it's a symmetric diagram which is it which it is so yes the result gave me 0 so it works I know I gave a very very brief overview of fine calc but then fine calc is very vast so I can't do justice in one video but I think um, with the reference and with this basic video I think you can start off doing calculations and again it's a need based package so whenever you need it you go to the reference find certain function that you need and then apply it so I hope you enjoyed this video although I agree it was a bit shabby thanks for watching